welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Gina and I had VSG surgery on April 25th, 2022. Today, I'm gonna to show you three recipes I'm trying to make for my next stage, which is purees. So I have everything set up in front of me. Um, the things that we're making today, we're gonna to do the infamous ricotta bake that everyone eats on purees. I'm gonna make uh, a version of a spinach and artichoke um, bake that I found online. I'll read the letter. I'll link the recipe below. I'm not following it exactly. Um, I'm kind of making some of my own modifications for that. And I'm also gonna make like this buffalo, um, like buffalo dip kind of mashed potato thing. It's hard to explain. You'll see um, when I go to eat it, I um, or when I go to make it. I, uh, it was something I had when I had my wisdom teeth out a couple years ago. And since you can only eat like soft things for whatever reason I had, leftover buffalo chicken dip in my fridge and I had mashed potatoes obviously from the wisdom teeth so I was like I need something with some flavor so I mixed the two and it was delicious and I think it'll work because I've ground down all the chicken so uh, we'll see how that turns out so I'm gonna show you guys like an overhead shot uh, of what I'm doing and then I'll show you the containers I bought for these and we'll bake them and we'll try them so let's get started okay welcome to my workstation so I have everything already um, paired out. I will leave all the recipes below um, and along with the macros. Now the macros will be what I'm using. If you find a different ricotta or a different cheese and you use it, just make sure you're um, at factoring that in. I'm using pretty much low fat or fat free everything. Um, so if you buy something different, just note that the macros will be a little bit different. So for the ricotta bake, we're gonna start off with eight ounces of just plain ricotta. And I believe this is the 1%. And then to that, we're gonna add one egg. And a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I just used the stuff in the green can. I know it's not the best, but it's just what I had on hand. And then from here, I don't really measure out my seasonings, so I would say maybe a teaspoon of salt because that ricotta has zero flavor. I'm gonna do a couple cracks of black pepper. Uh, about a teaspoon of garlic powder. You can just use like a basic Italian blend, but I don't, I don't have one of those, so. I'm doing it by hand. A little bit of onion powder. I'm gonna do probably a teaspoon of oregano. Or no, that's parsley and then oregano. Like so. Alright, this I'm gonna mix up now. And I've let all the cheeses and stuff I'm using um sit out so they're nice and soft. I'm just so excited to like be trying actual food now <laughs> and then get to cook again, which is my absolute favorite. Um, so definitely stay tuned, especially when we get in the soft phase and I can actually like grill and make things. It's going to be delicious. So what it's going to look like. It's fairly simple. I'm just going to taste for seasoning. It's pretty good. I'm going to add a couple more crack, uh, cracks of black pepper. And when we put the sauce on top right before we bake it, the acidity is going to cut right through all that cheese too. So that's going to be great. Okay. So this is step one for our ricotta bake done. I'm gonna push this off to the side. We're gonna get all the fillings done first, um, and then I'll show you what we top them before we throw them in the oven. So step one for this is done. Next, we're gonna make a spinach and artichoke uh, dip, dip slash bake kind of thing. So to start this one off, I'm gonna do four ounces of reduced fat cream cheese. And this was a recipe I saw online, but I modified it. Um, I'll, li I'll uh, link the other one below. We're going to add one 12 ounce can of artichoke hearts that I drained, um, like the fluid that or the liquid that they were in. I added a little bit of water and I pureed those. So all that's going in. 
And then I took uh, just a block of frozen spinach, did the same thing, uh, thawed it out, added a little bit of, I did the Fairlife milk in this and blended it up till it was a puree. And because I'm not using a full, um, a full block of cream cheese, I think we are still gonna need more base. So this is just five ounces of plain um, non-fat Greek yogurt. So I'm going to put all that in. Now these are gonna make a lot, like obviously I'm not gonna eat all this that fast. So we're gonna bake all of them and then um, I'm gonna freeze like most of them because I have two weeks to eat all this stuff basically. Um, so by freezing most of it, when I know I want one, I'll just you know pop it out a couple hours before and then just nuke it in the microwave. So we'll give this a mix. Now so far we have not seasoned this one at all. So I'm gonna just pre-test it. I definitely need salt. So we'll do a pinch of salt and then probably just some garlic powder in this one. nice and pureed no big chunks because our tummies right now cannot handle that that's pretty good I think we're gonna do a little bit more salt let's do some onion powder just for funsies just needs a little little something extra but you can definitely taste the artichokes and the spinach. A couple twists of black pepper. And hopefully when this bakes, some of that moisture should, should evaporate. But all right, that's pretty good. Tastes like spinach and artichoke dip. So this one we're gonna call done and we'll move on to our third one. So our third and final uh, filling recipe for today. We're making buffalo chicken dip, but with a little bit of mashed potato to get some of those veggies and carbs in, but not overdoing it. So the base for this one, again, we're gonna start with the other um, four ounces of cream cheese. To this, we're gonna make the buffalo part first and then we'll add in the potatoes at the end. So I have one, uh, I believe it's a 12 ounce can of uh, chicken, these I got from Sam's Club. So I just drained it and then added a tiny, the tiniest bit of water, put it in my Ninja and blended it, just so it's a nice, it's not completely pureed, but it's pretty fine. It's finer than it would be if like you just made chicken salad with it. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of ranch. Now this is not normal ranch. This is the Walden Farm, so it's zero everything. Um, it doesn't taste great on its own, but I think in this, it'll give us that ranch flavor we need. Um, so I'm gonna use that. I also have three tablespoons of buffalo sauce. I just use the Frank's buffalo because it's the best. And then this is a half a cup of fat-free cheddar cheese. So that's all gonna go in. And with the cheese and the ranch, I don't think this is gonna need extra seasoning, but I will, I will test it just to be sure. Now, one of the reasons when I had my wisdom teeth out, um, because I'm a wimp when it comes to spice, was like, whenever I had made that buffalo chicken dip previously, I don't remember why I had it, uh, it was just so spicy, but I'm like, oh, if I mix it with mashed potato, like. I still get the flavor, but it's gonna cut, it's gonna cut that heat a little bit with all the extra um, seasoning. Yeah, this does not need any more seasoning, that's delicious. This is eight ounces of just plain mashed potato, no flavoring it, it's just like butter flavor or whatever. So we're gonna take that and just incorporate it. So this is going to be packed 
pack the protein because that one can of chicken had so much plus the cream cheese and all that good stuff. All right, one last taste. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Actually, there's probably a little too much potato, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more buffalo. So I'm not that much of a wimp, but too much, and I'm like, okay, I'm dying. And I don't know if my new pouch likes spice yet, so I don't wanna go too crazy. That's a better color now. Beautiful. Okay, and that is the third filling done. So I'm gonna, off camera, I'm gonna weigh how much filling I have for each one, just so I know um, how many ounces to divide my total protein by. Um, so I'm gonna do that off camera, then I'll show you how to finish these off, and then we'll bake them. Okay, one real quick jump in. Um, I'm gonna show you what I used uh, to bake all these things in, but I've come to find out after the fact that technically you shouldn't be baking in the ball jars. Um, I was using like the thicker ones, it's not like the thin glass, but apparently they can shatter and and not, not be good. So if you're gonna use them, do it at your own risk. Like don't, obviously don't follow it. Um, or do your own research. I thought I had done the research in the beginning and it was okay if they weren't over uh, 370 in the oven. But just to be safe, don't do it. Use the ramekins. I think you can get ramekins at like the Dollar Tree uh, for like a buck. Um, I got mine at World Market. I think they were like $2.99 a piece for the bigger ones. Um, or just everything I'm showing you, just bake in a regular dish and then you can portion them out into the little jars or or whatever you have. So that's what I have. Use ramekins or a big baking dish. And yeah, okay, so enjoy the rest, bye. That is ready to go. So these are what I have. I didn't go out and buy these, but I can a lot of stuff. So I just had these little four ounce uh, jam and jelly jars, uh, just like the ball kind that I'm gonna use um, to fill up and then freeze. And I also have four of these little ramekins um, I'll probably do like two ricotta bakes and one of each of the other ones, just so I know I'm going to eat these right away. Uh, and then the other ones, I'll save a couple more out and then I'll freeze the rest. So let's start with the ricotta. And we're just going to scoop about four ounces. Now, I don't think I can eat more than four ounces right now. Um, unless it's something pretty thin. So one of these will probably last me about two meals. So I'm at 3.6 right now, but we still have to add our sauce. So. I just want it to be a little over four ounces. Okay, that's four and a half. And then we're just gonna top it with a little bit of mozzarella. Like so, so that's 4.8 ounces. I definitely won't be able to eat all that and I'm not gonna get as much in the, the ramekins. So let me fill up all this and then I'll show you the next one. filled and then two big ones. These each have about 2.5 ounces of the filling. I'll just do one scoop in these guys. So basically I, I know the total volume of what I made um, and once I figure out the protein then I'll divide by ounces um, and then figure out how much is in each one of these little ones. Let's grab the spinach ones next. 
onto the spinach. So I'm just gonna do one of these, just cause I know I'm gonna have it right away. I do about, yep, let's do four ounces of that. And then the same thing, I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of mozzarella. And then we'll see how many jars it takes to fill this. I might run out of jars, so let's see what happens. Choke sorted. So we have one big one and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, six small ones. So that's good. And I'll probably just have enough uh, jars, which is exciting. Last but not least is our low chicken dip. So. This one we're just going to top with a little bit of cheddar. Oh, I still got to put mozzarella on these. I'll do that after. But just to show you what this one looks like. Just like so. These will definitely be more than one meal. For now. All right, I'm going to fill the rest and then top them all with cheese and then I'll show you how long to bake them for. recording on the ricotta I tested it before uh, I started filling them and I did add a little bit too much salt so I did go ahead and add the rest of the ricotta I had so instead of eight ounces it was a total of 15 okay it was a total of 15 and now the salt like the teaspoon I put in is perfect so that was the only change to the recipe that I did off camera um, okay now let's get these in the oven Okay, so this is what everything looks like. The only thing that really has to cook in here is the egg that's in the ricotta ones. Um, so I'm gonna put this tray on the bottom just so it gets a little more cooking time. Um, I just have my two big cookie sheets with a cell pack because I don't know if they're gonna bubble over or not. Uh, I have the oven preheating right now and I'm gonna put them in at 350 for about 30 minutes and I'll check it after 15 just to make sure everything is bubbling and, and looking good. So let's go. heavy so just be careful. Now if you only wanted to make one of these at a time, I totally understand, but I'm trying to make a video one. And I like to be extra prepared, so I had to do everything at once. <laughs> Makes sense, right? So we'll see you in a half hour. <laughs> okay, we're 15 minutes in. They're definitely gonna need the full 30, but no crazy bubbling yet. They look good. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes, so let's take these out and see what they look like. They're starting to bubble now. They definitely needed the full 30 minutes for sure. Okay. Those look so delicious. Like I know I need to eat dinner soon, uh, I guess late lunch. I don't know which one to pick. Do we just have a couple tablespoons or teaspoons of each one? <gasps> look at those. <gasps> Doesn't that look so good? Look at that bubbling. I was just putting on my Instagram that I haven't been able to cook like this for a month because exactly one month ago I started my uh, pre-op diet. So. I haven't had like real meals since then, but these just look so delicious. So we'll let these cool because they are a bubbling 
and then we'll do a taste test and hopefully they taste good and warm. Uh, I mean, I know they will. They tasted fine when I put them in there. So, but let me just give you a real quick close up shot. So there's the spinach. There's the ricotta bake. Oh, don't those look so good? More spinach and the, the buffalo chicken dip kind of puffed up a little bit, which I think is funny. But those are gonna make some great meals. I might have to skim off the top on a couple of these because they're going, they're going over. But there, there's our meal prep. So I will see you when these cool down a little bit, and then we'll do a taste test. Okay, we're back to the taste testing portion now. So I'm literally just gonna take a little bite out of each of these because there's no way I'm eating all of this. So let's start with the ricotta bake. And they all smell so good. It smells like lasagna. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. I might add a little bit more sauce, like when I go to eat these, just because most of it's the cheese and you need a little bit of that sauce. Or, sauce on the bottom. That's what I should have done. Sauce on the bottom, then filling them more sauce. So if I ever make this again, I don't want to take too many. I'm not going to take a second bite. One bite per thing. Okay, let's switch. This is the spinach and artichoke. And I did uh, figure out all the macros for these while they were in the oven. So basically for the ricotta and the buffalo, um, each ounce has three and a half grams of protein. This spinach one though, I didn't put enough stuff in it to make it protein heavy. So I would probably have to add protein powder or something if I made this again, but I have so many of them, I probably won't. Um, but it's about one gram of protein per ounce for this. So let's see how this tastes. Mm. It tastes exactly like spinach and artichoke dip. So I think for these, I'll definitely eat them, but volume wise, it's not worth it. Like this whole thing is four ounces. It's only four grams of protein. So, but it's got a lot of good vegetables in it. So even if I take an ounce out for like my side, like that would be worth it. And then down the line, I think when I can eat like real food again, if I get those Quest like Cool Ranch protein chips, or even the cheese, eh, maybe not the Cool Ranch ones, and dip those in here to make it like an actual dip, because those chips have like 20 some odd grams of protein. That would be delicious, and I'll definitely do that when I can eat regular food again. Okay, last one. This is the buffalo chicken dip. Potato-y thing. And this is probably the one I'm most excited about. It, <laughs> oh. Man, that spice really gets you. It smells so good though. That was my first chicken bite in a month. That's fun. It tastes like buffalo chicken dip in a little pot. So I would say these are all a success. The, um, the spinach and artichoke may be not, might not be worth your while, um, but down the line, it'll definitely be worth to have something with that much vegetables packed into such a small thing that's a lot of spinach and a lot of artichokes and i think i have six of those so that's great for my veggie and these are good for my protein so overall i would say this is a success overall i would say this is a success i want to thanks thank you all for watching if you've made it this far i'm sure this has been a long video um, but hopefully you've got some ideas of things that you can make when you're on purees it doesn't have to be boring it doesn't have to just still be putting an oatmeal and all that kind of jazz. You can have like an actual meal and enjoy it. So I'll probably have a ricotta bake for dinner later. And then basically all I'm gonna do with the rest of those is let them cool off completely. All the ramekin ones I'll just cover with tin foil and throw them in the fridge. I'll save a couple of the small ones because obviously the, the four of these ramekins will take me a while to get through. Um, probably four or five days, I would imagine. 
and then I'll keep like two extra buffalo ones out I think um, and then the rest will just pop the lids on and make sure they're sealed and throw them in the freezer so this will keep me fed for a very long time so again thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye oh and also all the recipes I'll have down below I'll have the original uh, spinach and artichoke recipe video um, and then I'll type out the other two because I kind of just made it up but okay that was it bye